Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Critic, this is weird. Yeah, why the hell are we doing this? Fools! Don't you know today we're discussing scary stories to tell in the dark? Yeah, but so what? The only way to talk about scary stories is to gather around a campfire and read them in the spookiest way possible. Speaking of which, where are your campfires? We're indoors, you psycho. We're just doing flashlights. Yeah, what the hell are you burning? Oh, you know, anything safe and controlled. Now, are we gonna start this thing or what? We're waiting on you. You're the one with the book. Indeed. Here it is, the complete scary stories collection. Here we go. Our story takes place decades ago when a group of geeky boys and one girl are being picked on by bullies. Wait, isn't that Stephen King's It? Yeah, that's strange. How'd that get in there? Ah, here we go. The boy trembled with agony as a voice kept calling out, Where's my toe? Where's my toe? Ooh. Then the book started writing itself, and the geeky kid was shocked to find it was all happening in real life. Wait, that's never-ending story. What the hell is going on? Other random tales are working themselves in where they don't belong. Just keep going. Maybe it gets back on track. Ah, yes, here we go. The pale woman had black eyes and crept closer and closer. Ooh. Then the geeky kid said if they want to break the curse to stop the stories coming to life, they have to confront the ghoulish CGI entity. Dude, that's Goosebumps. No, no, it's a different book series. I mean, Goosebumps the movie. That's the script of Goosebumps the movie. Dude, how'd that even fit in there? Just skip to the end. Does it wrap up like a scary stories book or not? It doesn't end. It just says Percy Jackson style sequel baiting. So these frightened you when you were younger. This isn't scary stories! I mean... Sometimes it is, but mostly it's just a weak retread of other various stories. How's this thanks to me? Ha! Guillermo del Toro! The master of masters. Are you joining our spooky campfire too? No, this is just how I talk to everyone online. Del Toro, you're a talented filmmaker. How did you miss the mark with this? Well, I plan to direct a film version of scary stories to tell in the dark. Of course. Sure to be a masterpiece. But then I decided... Nah. Well played. It would not have matched your brilliance. But I still wrote and produced it. An inspired choice. I will kill whoever you want me to kill. Wow. Whenever I leave a project, the people who take over know how to capture my original intent. Do they? I don't care. I'm working on 50 other things. With films like this, it shows. Based on the hit collection of spooky folklore that was actually banned from some schools, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark left a gigantic impression on countless kids. From the classic stories passed from generation to generation to those blood-curdling illustrations that are masterworks in their own right, they are just as memorable and timeless now as they were when they were published in the 80s and 90s. So like many, I was hyped as hell to hear a movie was being made about them. Hoping this would be a legitimately frightening kids film like the ones we used to get in the 80s and possibly a new generation's creep show, trick or treat, or tales from the dark side. But while the first part came true, being so intense it got a PG-13 rating, Scary Story sadly wasn't an anthology film, only sneaking in elements from the books and focusing on a completely different plot. I guess we've seen properties try a different, even self-aware angle before and achieve great success. But where I'll always remember Miles Morales or Arthur Fleck, I'm not gonna remember... I've forgotten their names already! But with decent critical reactions, audience reactions, and even a sequel on the way, should we be content with a passable film containing some great scenes? Or should we be pissed that we could have gotten one of the great game-changing horror films, particularly for younger people? I just don't know. Del Toro, what should we think? I think you should love whoever you want and eat worms for protein. On it!
You're all nuts. Oh yeah? I didn't see you turn on a light. What's lighting up your office? My glowing personality. Yeah, okay. This is scary stories to tell in the dark. Which it's not gonna be for a while. The film opens with a narration that sounds like that one kid who tried way too hard in your creative writing class. Stories hurt. They make us who we are. They have such power. This I learned. And what's the cause? Eating cows. Monsters! Amy, see me after class. We start off in 1968, and to answer your question, I'm not entirely sure why. At first it's cool, as it has both a faded, but also vibrant color palette that a lot of films of the 60s and 70s had. But it's still modern horror, so, you know, green and green and green and... Ooh, red! No, no, back to, to green. When did this become a scary color? Black, brown, blue, like I said, even red, but green is more a relaxing color often associated with safety. It's not even like a sickly green like in The Boys or Fight Club, it's like a tree leaf green. I guess you could argue this movie's playing around with the idea, like taking a safe color and making it threatening, you know, messing with your expectations, creating a false sense of security, but... Now for the coup d'etat. I don't think this film's smart enough for that. Anyway, you're introduced to our main character, Stella, played by Zoe Margaret Coletti, who is a hipster before there were hipsters. Stella! I don't want to go trick-or-treating. Get all the eggs and teepee you can, and meet us at seven. You can tell he's a geek because he blows into aquarium nets. That, that, that cliche. This is Chuck, played by Austin Sajur, and Augie, played by Gabriel Rush. They're the Losers Club without the laughs. At least I'm not a clown. I'm a Pierrot. Clown. Thank you for that pause so you can let the roar of laughter fill the theater. Do you even know it's in those same toxic chemicals that's giving our troops Hodgkin's lymphoma? And then you ate them all. Is that why they taste so good? <laughs> Am I supposed to like them? Because so far the only thing the film's doing right is I want to see them horribly murdered. However, I will give this film some leeway if it's a Terrifier prequel. It's not gonna show. What? No, he'll show. Also give him props, this is pretty sweet revenge on a bully by putting shit in their candy bag knowing he'll steal it. Alright, this is pretty cool. It is nice seeing the little guy finally getting some payback. Jesus Christ! Holy shit! Egg throwing, lighting people on fire. It's Halloween, Charlie Brown! Oh, I'm gonna murder! First take my anger out on the street! Okay, let's go. While at the public domain drive-in, a boy named Ramon, played by Michael Garza, thankfully doesn't lock his car. This is taken? Uh, I don't guess not. Thank you, God! Hey, get out of my car! My fetish to bang Daria as a witch is finally coming true and you're gonna cockblock me! Yeah, the car. The bullies find them, though, still looking for payback. I don't think that you heard me. Everyone needs to get out. You too. Just let us purge. You're not gonna try and run away like mommy too now, are you so? Yeah, this bully is a little... odd. In most films, they're one-dimensional 30-year-olds who scream at the top of their lungs, but this one mumble whispers for some reason. Let's go, girl. Trash him. Eat shit, Harold. This ain't over. How about some dessert? I hope you find a way out. His whole performance is Cameron's voice when Bueller saves him. Everyone needs to get out. Paris Bueller, you're my hero. Hey, get back in your car or get the hell out of here. Next time, there won't be a middle-aged doughy guy to save you. Her, her mom left when she was a kid. People would and stop talking about it. Yeah, and we're like her only friends now. So as you can imagine, she's pretty miserable. Oh, don't worry. They do get more annoying as the film continues. Can, can I see your switchblade? Did I say I had a switchblade? No, I, I guess you, you didn't. He has a switchblade. <sighs> Remember how I said Corey Feldman sounded like a sped-up Stallone in Lost Boys? Does your brother know who that <laughs> vampire is? Hey, just relax, amigo. This kid sounds like a sped up Corey Feldman. Does your brother know who that vampire is? So what are you doing alone at a drive-in? Then you'll have to kill him. You're not from here, are you? Scientists tell me that the space in my nasal cavity is so dense that nothing can escape it. Do you want to see a haunted house? So, kind of out of nowhere, they decide to check out a haunted house. I mean, yeah, I know it's Halloween, but they don't even mention this place until they just decide to go there. Anyone got a pin? 
Meet Lola. She is madly in love with me. Yeah, your hand, maybe. Hey, don't talk about women named Lola like that. Oh, that Lola, definitely. He picks the lock and they sneak inside. The Bellows had a secret, a daughter. Nobody's ever found a picture of Sarah. Ah! Better run, oh, Clown, better run! I hoped a movie based on the best ghost stories ever told had shitty fake out scares too. Mrs. Briggs was driving to the shopping mall to do some- BOO! <laughs> nah, just kidding. <laughs> Last minute Christmas shopping when she accidentally... Kids would come from all over. Sarah told them stories. Scary stories. To tell in the... <sighs> line. The legend goes, if you find Sarah Bellow's book and ask her to tell you a story, it'll be the last story you ever hear. So they find the book and leave it alone. Nah, you know the drill. Sarah Bellow's telling me a story. Because the one we're in is pretty boring so far. They leave the house and find the bullies have messed with Ramon's car because... Oh, I guess they knew they'd be at that house. Shit! Huh, I wonder what that means. I think it's a good thing I didn't know what that means. That's nice to have in my search history. I can try and scrounge up something to help. Stella invites Ramon to her home to help him out with his car and naturally they hit it off. You know, if you're serious about being a writer, you can't do it here. You gotta move to the city. Everyone knows King wrote his best work in Manhattan. He puts it in everything. Never thought I'd say this, but if that haunted book has nothing to do with Bette Midler, I'm not interested. She begins to read a story called Harold, because we're one third in, maybe we should acknowledge the source material. And thank God it does, because when it references the books, it's pretty friggin' awesome. Not only does it look exactly like the Stephen Gamble illustrations, but it captures the slow and creepy tone that the books were known for. Give them credit as well, they get rid of the bully pretty early on so we don't have to put up with him for the rest of the film. I'm just an obnoxious pushy kid alone in a horror film. Any takers? <laughs> Everything from the shots to the pacing to even how he moves is wonderfully creepy. If I was a kid, this would give me the nightmares I wished something like Are You Afraid of the Dark or Goosebumps would give me. And I know those shows were fine for what they were, but they were never scary. This is actually scary and without any blood or gore. It's what I've always wanted to see in a scary property for kids. Oh, I know it sounds suspicious, but you look damn delicious. If I only had your brain. The bully starts growing straw, and as you'd imagine, there's a new Herald in town. It's what Tommy was wearing last night. Okay, what if this is Tommy? And, and what happens in the book is exactly what's happened for real. Just a scarecrow. But he sounds like Henry Kissinger sucking helium. <laughs> That's totally Tommy. Wait, so you think that kids should see something this frightening? I mean, not like little, little kids, but I mean, if something is rated PG, meaning parents should be around while they're watching it, then yeah, get away with as much as you can. If the kid can't take it, they'll know what they can handle. Yeah, but this is PG-13. Even better! We know younger kids sneak into those anyway. At least we're giving them the scares they're looking for. Yeah, but what about- I agree. Me too, I just mailed you an award for saying that. Ah, oh, gracias! I needed something to balance my coffee table. Stella returns the book to the house, but somehow it makes its way back to her. Where did you get that? It was just here on your bookshelf. What do you think this Babadook is? The book has a story so good it writes itself, and apparently Augie is the next victim. Mother was sitting at the edge of the garden when she saw a big toe. Augie! Toe! Does the story is writing itself right now? I, I don't know how. The sound scared him. It was a voice. And it called out, who took my toe? Two forgettable kids who were underwritten were afraid. Hey, it's reviewing itself too! Augie accidentally eats a big toe in his soup, and a creepy woman, again straight out of the illustrations, comes looking for it. It's technically combining a few stories from the books, but honestly, it's so effective, I don't think it really matters. It's still creepy. <sighs> Oh, if only I had a chair to prop up against the door. And as lame as that fake out scare was earlier, this scene actually does a really good job tricking you into where the real scare is gonna happen. 
There's several points where most horror films would do their reveal, but they cleverly hold off. I really do give credit that the most effort that went into this film seems to be in the scares. Kiss me like I'm anybody who would want to kiss you! As if this year hasn't been grim enough already. We have the disappearance on our hands, friends. Pretty douchey of Mark Hamill to do his Joker voice announcing a disappearance. Stella asked to meet up with Ramon, Chuck, and his sister. Sorry we're late. Ruth ran out of zip paint, but so urgent. Didn't you miss when he wasn't on screen? All those scary creatures and creepy atmosphere. They needed more Chuck! Imagine his angelic voice during those scenes. <laughs> ordered the chicken. This isn't about candy, it's about payback. Meet Lola. She is madly in love with me. <laughs> Aren't you too ugly to go on a date? At least I'm not a clown. Release the truck cut! Wait, I've always wanted to try this. In Soviet Russia! You don't read the book. The book reads you. Gravity Falls was right. paper archives to see if they can find out any more information on Sarah Bellows. After Sarah hung herself, the Bellows family fired Sylvie as she and her daughter Lulu were thought to be responsible for teaching her black magic. If it's in the paper, it has to be true, right? This Randolph Hearst guy wouldn't lie, right? They discover something interesting happened to Bellows after she hanged herself. In just one year, all her family members left. But they, they didn't just leave the town. The town left them. Oh, will you knock it off? They each have a story. The book starts writing again about a red spot, and they notice Chuck just spilled a blotch of ketchup on himself. I'm, I'm gonna die! I don't wanna die! Spider crawled across a young girl's cheek and bit her. Wait, young girl? Oh, there goes my reveal party. Thanks, book! Oh, honey, you need to do something about that. It's, of course, talking about his sister who had a spider bite on her cheek that, just like in the book, turns out to be a nest of eggs. <laughs> I'll admit I'm not particularly afraid of spiders, so I'm not really sure if this scene is that scary. I think Tamara is, though. Hey, Tamara, is this scene scary? Okay, the scene works. Oh, does that mean she doesn't want any protein worms? Oh my god, bro! Oh, come on, just imagine they're smaller versions of your brother. Oh, Christ, that's even more scary. Who did that? Who did that? Who did that? taken to a hospital, so they tried to look up one of the servants who used to work at the Bellows house. I had this messed up dream again. Again? What do you mean again? This is the first time you're mentioning it. I was trapped in the red room. Why are you saying the red room like we've heard of this before? That fat, pale lady who keeps whispering, this is an evil place. Why are you even bringing this up now? We just rang the doorbell! Hello? You look like you were having a conversation about the Red Room. Everybody knows that story. It bears no repeating, but I'm sure you have several times organically. God, that was bad writing! Tricky Dicky. That's no name for a president. Now pussy grabbing Cheeto. That's a title I want to see. Lulu, can you hear us? Oprah never did recover from Wrinkle in Time. There is no magic child. There is only rage. You shouldn't have taken the book. We didn't take the book. The book took us! Okay, seriously. Scrolling. They're told that Sarah hanged herself at the hospital and not the house. Then what are we still doing here? Let's go. Wow, he wanted to go there so fast he literally disappeared on the word go. Then what are we still doing here? Let's they come across a recording of Sarah Bellows and seemingly the doctors try to force a confession out of her. I didn't do it. <laughs> it's nice hearing the original audio from Return to Oz. Another story begins writing, and that incredibly well-built-up red room comes to life, and a pale woman with black eyes walks towards Chuck. Man, you stop giving attention to Bjork for a few years, and this is the comeback she plans. The funny thing is, I never found that image particularly creepy. If anything, I always thought she was kind of humorous looking. But in my opinion, she's the scariest part of this movie. No matter where Chuck goes, she's down every hallway, and on top of that, she's the same distance away in each one. So no matter where he turns, she keeps getting closer and closer. It's goddamn terrifying. Uh, 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 
No, oh, come on, it's not like he ever truly left the womb anyway. Chuck! Chuck! His porno pen! Oh, it's still sticky. They're caught sneaking in by the police, and Stella calls her dad, played by Dean Norris, from the police station. I can't do anything about it. No, no, you, you gotta help me out here, sweet. Once Breaking Bad ended, my roles have been getting smaller and smaller. I mean, Jesus, they're wasting me in this movie. I'm on screen two minutes, and I'm clearly giving the best performance. It's not your fault, Stella. It's not your fault she left. Please, please, please listen to me. I gotta go. It's not your fault, Stella. Please. Don't I'm sorry. Wasn't here. Give me your hand, movie. Give me your hand. That's for not using it more! It's revealed that Ramon is actually a draft dodger, and the police try to force him to say where Chuck and the others are. If you're not going in there, maybe a night behind bars will loosen those lips of yours. Here, stay in this cell with this pretty girl. That'll teach you. Oh, they're in different cells. Eh, there's stuff they can still do. Two months ago, they shipped my brother back from Vietnam in pieces. Yeah, it was pretty ballsy of them to mail him to us. Didn't even put Fragile on the box. Uh, Richard Nixon is still holding a 43 and Humphrey 35, but... So, you know. Scary stories, Vietnam, Nixon. Just as the book's intended! The book once again starts writing a story, and this is sadly the only section taken from the original that's kinda lame. The Jangly Man. It's also combined with another story, which again isn't a big deal as the others were combinations too, but this guy looks less like a scary stories ghost and more like a Beetlejuice character. Me, Taito Walker! Are you shitting me? That effect sucks balls! In the books, you never see what he looks like, and though it is cool to see this really talented contortionist play him, look at what the first thing he does is. <laughs> Yeah, we go from slow-moving, often quiet, eerily built-up ghouls to a fast, loud, blood-hungry animal that moves more like a velociraptor than a disturbing presence creeping close by. It just doesn't match the other scares in the movie. Coward! Ooh, that's gonna stay with me. Where's my toe? This is an evil place! Coward! Coward! Well, uh, dork! Nixon's Gozer! Sorry, what are we doing? They drive to the house with the jangly man chasing them because, yeah, T-1000 car chase is exactly what I want to see in scary stories. And they try to appease the spirit of Sarah Bellows. Oh, great, we're in that piece of shit Winchester flick. Does every horror film have to lie and say it's based on a true story now? You can't hide from us. She sees Sarah Bellows was the victim of an abusive family, and Stella tells her that by attacking others, she's becoming a monster herself. Yeah, we're just dealing for Paranorman now. You took my friends. Two of the people that I love most. Well, one and a half. Okay, if you like half of each, that kind of makes one. I, actually, you can't do me a favor. This is on you, Sarah. It's all on you. Bellows is revealed to be at Harris in a wig, and Stella says if she lets them live, she'll tell the world the real story about how she was a victim. Sarah Bellows was innocent. She knew the truth. <gasps> okay, the pros can use work, but it's still better than Dean Coons. <laughs> After that pretty underwhelming climax, the two are let go, Stella tells her story, and Ramon is gonna go to Vietnam and like it! Fight me? Every day. Yeah, not only is he sent to war, but all the characters killed off don't come back. Sort of. Stella says she's convinced there's some way in the book to find them. And they reveal that the sister is okay, like that's supposed to be some kind of big shock. What? The person who wasn't dead isn't dead? That's like the sixth sense if nothing happened to Bruce Willis! Chuck and Augie are still gone, but I know there is a way to bring them back. That's okay. We're good. And that the secret is in the book. Did you see the creeper faces they made at you? You don't need that in your life. And we won't stop until we find them. Wasn't it Bellows who wrote the book to begin with? You're on good terms with her now, aren't you? In fact, you're moving away from where she is. You're literally creating distance between you and the problem. It's like saying, look, that house is burning down. Better throw water on the fire station. This makes no sense. But, you know, Nixon. 
goddamn Nixon that that's scary stories to tell him the what was this? God damn it! As a scary stories fan, this movie is so frustrating. Is it awful? No, not even close. But a lot of it is very standard or underwhelming. And I feel like a series as grand as Scary Stories deserves better. But on the other hand, when it does decide to be a Scary Stories movie, it does it right. It pushes the boundaries of what's acceptable in a horror film meant for younger people. I always talk about how a lot of kids' media is too coddled, but by God, this one isn't. It warns you that it's scary, and it delivers the goods. Doing so in a way that's not gory, but it's still frightening. I don't know, it's kinda like if the first Batman movie you ever got was Batman Forever. It'd probably be alright if you didn't have another Batman movie to compare it to, but you're still aware you could've gotten The Dark Knight. I guess I do recommend it for the good moments, and even the bad moments aren't terrible. They just feel like a lot of missed opportunities. It's not the masterpiece that Scary Stories deserves, but it does have just enough nightmare fuel to keep you up at night. Do not worry. I will fix all of these problems when I direct the sequel. It is a passion project I have been wanting to do for years. Now on second thought I am bored with it. Wait! I've got it! Witches too! Witches be crazy! Well, thanks, Critic. These weren't quite the campfire stories I was expecting, but it was memorable. Yeah, I guess that sums up the movie pretty well too, huh? You gonna be okay, Critic? Oh yeah, I mean, I really am a Scary Stories fan, but I guess I can be thankful for the scary moments we got. No, I mean your home. It must be covered in flames by now. Is it possible for a ceiling to look like a bedsheet of flames? Yes. Then I think I'm good. I'm a nostalgia critic, I remember it, so you don't have to. This is 2020. Come on, you know you want to do one more. But October will be over. He'll be living in the past. That's literally his job. You're literally his job. What? Do one more. No, it'd be weird. One more. Weird. One more. Weird. One more. Weird. One more. Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out. Uh, once again, somebody asked if we could do a shout out for a particular charity, and uh, we looked it up, and this one seemed like a really, really cool idea. It's called uh, Team Make a Difference, and this is a new nonprofit organization that uh, was established to help people in need by renovating a dream room for them. Uh, they grant someone in need a place of serenity to rest comfortably, heal, and restore hope. When their body and spirit are healed, their wishes to have inspired them to one day pay it forward by helping someone else in need. This space is considered their special place within their home where they can spend most of their time. They want to create an atmosphere that will be accessible for their needs and also be the one that is uplifting, beautiful, and unique to the individual. So this is a really, really cool idea. Uh, I, I think it's just such a, a lovely thing to do. And, uh, you know, of course you can donate to the cause, but you can also uh, go to the site and you can recommend people that you think are, are deserving of this. It, it's usually within their uh, community, so uh, go ahead and look up and see where it is. But uh, I really thought it was a cool idea, and I just wanted to get some attention on it. And, uh, you know, likewise, if you have a charity that you think really, really deserves more attention, I, I, don't be afraid to drop us a line. I mean, we, we do look them up and make sure that they're legit and everything. So, uh, yeah, if you have one that you really want a shout-out, I can't guarantee it's going to get thousands of bucks or anything. Sometimes it's... 30 bucks, sometimes it's 3,000, who knows? <laughs> I mean, you never really know. So uh, go ahead and uh, send it our way and uh, we'll do our best to get attention on it. But for now, check this one out. Uh, it's a really, really cool idea. It has some wonderful people behind it. So go ahead and take a look. Thank you so much.